Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I've got myself a copy of Synthogy's Ivory 2, and this is the American Concert D. It's the latest version, and uh, I wanted to give you a full overview. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the kind of technical overview first, and I'm sitting in front of my computer to do that with a very small M Audio uh, mini keyboard, and then what I'm then going to do is jump over at the end of this and just show you some sound demos and it just means that I'm then going onto a keyboard with, with a full action and sustain pedal and stuff like that so it's a much better way of showing you uh, the kind of responsiveness of the piano and stuff like that. So what it is, it's a, uh, a standalone or it's a VST audio units, RTAS and if you're a Pro Tools user, very exciting, it's also AAX native as well which is great for those of us that are getting ready for the transition to Pro Tools 11 when it eventually arrives. Uh, and it can either run, obviously, within your door or it can run standalone and then use the sound card. So what I want to give you is a full show and tell. And then, as I say, at the end of it, I'll then start playing you some of the sounds on it as well. It's a 45 gigabyte uh, sound library. So it took me a couple of hours to load in DVDs, seven DVDs in all, uh, loading in the uh, sample library. And then I had to uh, use an iLock to unlock it. So uh, no good borrowing those discs off your friends and trying to use them because it won't work. You need actually to even hear this, you need to have your iLock uh, license downloaded here, iLock. So I did all of that, all pain free. Uh, and as I say, I just went and registered it, got an iLock deposit to put it on my iLock account. And then I have this baby. So let's give you a kind of show and tell. What you have uh, at the top straight away is you have MIDI, uh, channels and device, of course. And at the moment, say I'm using the, the, mini, the MIDI 32, but there's all the devices it can see at the moment. And we'll, we'll jump in a, in a little while onto my Axiom Pro so I can uh, have some more uh, feeling when I actually show you the sounds. And so let's select your MIDI device and then... Uh, all sorts of things that you can then go to controls here and uh, do quite a lot of control mapping as well, which is really quite nice. We can use mod wheel instead to control things like uh, the uh, things like the stereo width. Uh, and we could so we go through there or the EQ or the ambient. So we could come in and we could uh, go wet and dry here. And we say I want to use the mod wheel from now on. And then that would then be controlled from the model. So, so really nice mapping for the controllers, which is really good if you want performance mapping when you're, if you wanted to use this live on a laptop or something like that. Uh, and then we have the audio settings here. So we've got uh, device uh, there. I'm going and we could choose our device. And at the moment I'm using built-in line output on my Mac. I've got a buffer size of 512. We can take it right down to 16 samples or right up to 4096. And then choose my channels. And then I have uh, the control panel as well, where I can go in, of course, and go straight in and actually do the alterations here within my Mac OS. And of course, on a Windows machine, that would be different, but that's how it would work on a Mac. Then a metronome, quite useful. Uh, if you want to play along with a metronome. That's quite nice. And of course, we can start that. We can also adjust it as well choose which MIDI channel it's sending to and stuff like that, uh, add reverb to it, take it away, change the tempo, all kinds of stuff like that. So that's quite helpful if you're doing kind of practice work and stuff like that. And again, go into device here and we can use the output to built-in synth or something else, which is really quite nice. Uh, and then we have uh, the window setting as well. We can bring all to the front anything we've got open already. So let's have a look at it in some detail. And uh, you have a session presets here that you can have uh, where you can uh, choose things like the octave it's set to transpose pitch stuff like that and mapping for the uh, velocity mapping as well so we can go in and we can change that velocity map we can alter it like that and we can alter the minimum velocity like that and the maximum velocity as well so you can do lots of velocity mapping it's not brutal and just like uh, some just give you shapes but this one you can do as I say lots of good good mapping on it if you want and then set it so you've got different arc types and you've got power power arcs and you can do really cool stuff like that so it's very very powerful being able to set it as you want it so uh, we can then save those and bring them in so we can say uh, warm touch open that one up and then that's a different setting now so it's different presets uh, that you can use as well for that and then we have the session presets as well and we can uh, we can save those and bring them in if we want to and uh, things like all your tuning, equal tuning, stretch tuning, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots and lots of complexity uh, that you have in there for getting it ready to making it playable. 
Uh, so that's all your session settings. Then we have the program settings, which are really nice. We can choose things like sustain resonance, how much we want of that, the sympathetic resonance, the pedal noise. So if you're using a pedal, uh, I'll just jump onto my pedal a second. At the moment, I've pressed my pedal, nothing happens. You might even hear it clicking down the mic. And turn it on. We can then choose that to be quite loud if we want to. Then if we were using that, so if I change this now to be my uh, MIDI device, to be uh, my Axiom Pro, coming in you can hear the pedal noise you've got a pair of headphones on that's quite useful quite nice so let's just go back to the device we were using before which is the 32 MIDI okay easy as that uh, and then we could choose different soundboards uh, and loads to be honest it, this is it, you can really pimp this piano that's the best way of putting it there's there's not much you can't do release time so key noise the timbre And stereo width is sometimes important when you're trying to place a piano in a mix. It's sometimes too wide. And pull that in. Uh, then uh, stereo perspective is performance or audience. So at the moment, top top notes will be in my right ear. Change it. Now my bottom ear because we're looking at the piano from the other side of the piano. And uh, lid positions. Again, there's not much you can't do really to be blunt with you. Uh, then we've got synth, we're going to add a synth to it as well, so if you want to do something really nice, kind of... Uh, turn that on there. Nice if you're using it live, as I say, uh, lots often often in sort of ballad work and, and some jazz stuff, you'll, you'll often put something behind it and some really nice stuff in there actually. So nice thing as well, you can change the, the octave and sometimes that's really useful. That's really nice. And then you have uh, program presets. So we can come in here and there's loads of different programs. So we could go like Jazz American D. It's just gonna load that up because it's loading a load of samples. It'll take a moment. Quite a bright piano, that one. Then we have the effects section. We have an equalizer. Nice parametric mid there, and it really does work. Chorus if you want it. And then we have ambient reverb as well, so we could go for something like a nice big concert hall, quite big. Just push that wetness up and really do some nice effects like kind of scoring kind of sounds as well. So we could now. Of course, we can save that. And then we have a load of preferences as well, how we want the knobs to work and what your MIDI volume is on. So you have complete control for both uh, performance and for recording, which is really nice. What I'm going to do now then is jump across to my uh, other controller keyboard. And I'm going to use that so I can sort of give you a real demo of some of the sounds that I've found and give you a kind of full, so you'll hear my microphone squeaking as I move it across. So let's find ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to load in a program preset. We'll start with the standard factory one first.
What I'm also going to do as well is turn off my microphone for a second so you can't hear all the clicking and banging off the keys on the on, on the keyboard or off my pedal as well. And I'm just going to go through some sounds so you won't hear me talk for a bit, which is probably going to be quite nice. I'm just going to go through some of the different sounds and get an idea of how this sounds. And uh, then I'll tell you what I think of it at the end.
so there we are. I think I've given you a kind of overview. As you can see, there's more than uh, we haven't got time to go through all of them. But as you can see, there's an enormous amount of presets in there that you can work with. And I wanted to show you something that's kind of kind of pretty standard, uh, something for ballad, something for jazz, something for gospel. Uh, there's, they're all in there. Uh, and uh, I've, I've not used ivory before. People have raved about it to me before. But, uh, but you know, one of the signs of a great piano, and in, in, in fact, one of the signs of a great piano plug-in uh, is actually the same as the sign of a great piano. The sign of a great piano is you sit down on it and it's hard to come back off it because you just sit there and you're inspired and you're busking around it and you're trying it out and, and it just really want, makes you want to sit and write uh, write great songs. And you know what? I got this yesterday and I wanted to play with it before I did the uh, review of it, but I sat down on it and I spent an hour and a half just noodling and doodling around on this piano and it was like noodling and doodling around on a proper grand piano. And of course, this isn't a real grand piano. Uh, nobody suggests that for a moment. But yeah, uh, but uh, I have to say that it really is inspirational, and it's really something that I loved using. And people say to me, "What gets Editor's Choice Award?" And what gets Editor's Choice Award is something that I will be using, and I do use in my own stuff. Then, uh, and 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 this is one of them. So I'm going to give Ivory Two this version of it, especially as it's the first AX piano that I know of, the American Concert D my editor's choice award i think it's about 140 pounds so it's 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 outstanding value for money for what you get you get enormous amount of piano variation there you get enormous amount of tweakability both for live and for studio uh, it's a massive thumbs up from me uh, and, and i'm not, not a really big fan of these things normally because i haven't found one yet where i sit and noodle and doodle all, all afternoon on it but uh, uh you go and make your own mind up i'm going to carry on playing this for a few more hours thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon